What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to Tech Savvy Buyer. My name is Ahmad Zia and on today's episode I'm going to dive deep into some of the new articles and statements that have come out from Sony's head of PlayStation who is John Codera and it's really dropping some hints on to what the future looks like for PlayStation. But um, we'll jump right into this. I'm not going to even go through an intro today guys. I just want to get this message across because I thought it was really interesting and it kind of hits on a couple of things that I've been saying in my previous videos. But just to get straight to the point, um, I think there's pretty strong suggestions and hints that are coming from Sony's leadership that's basically stating that the PlayStation 5 is not going to be released for another three years. Um, and that kind of goes in line with what I was thinking of as well, because we, we do see that in this generation of consoles, it's the first time that they're introducing mid-generation step-ups, right? So we saw with the PS4 Pro, we saw with the One S and the One X as well. So those are definitely new things and new concepts to console gaming, at least at the minimum. And it's definitely changing the landscape of how consoles evolve over the years. Traditionally, you'd see every seven or eight years a new console would come out, but now that we've got newer ones, it's kind of making it so that they might not need to upgrade right away. Um, there's a couple interesting points to this. So personally, again, whenever I give a personal opinion, it's my opinion and I have my own reasons to think that way, but you know, everyone else is free to think the way they are and the way that they like to. But specifically, I think that it's actually a smart decision for them to wait three years. And here's where my thought process comes from and here's why. So number one, the PS4 Pro came out in 2016, right? And if you look at the life cycle of it being a mid-generation console, I would hope that Sony plans to run that system for at least four or five years before they decide to kill that initial, you know, that investment that they made. Think from a corporate standpoint. I mean, if any of my viewers, if any of you guys work for corporate America, I personally work for corporate America. I work for a Fortune 100 company, and I can see how they make decisions and what backs up those kind of decisions. So. You know, if they're going to go and do a whole bunch of investment and change the architecture of a console, invest in new parts and new components, increase RAM, increase hard drive capacity, increase all the different things that we saw that came in the PS4 Pro step up from the base PS4, they want to see a return on investment. And typically for a project of that scope to get approved by the financial teams of these companies, the payback or return on investment in period is usually several years, but they have to show a positive ROI. Otherwise, there's no business justification for releasing a console like that. So while you might think like two years, two years would be when they start to make money back on it. And then anything after that is when they start to make even more money or profit, right? So keeping that in mind, that's just one aspect of it. They don't want to cannibalize their sales. If the PS5 comes out right now, what incentive do a lot of people have to go and buy the PS4 Pro? How do you think that makes the people who already went and bought the PS4 Pro feel? You know, being one of the early adopters, I went out during launch day and got mine. Um, and personally, like, I don't think that we've tapped into the full capability yet as consumers and even as developers to seeing what the PS4 Pro can deliver with the latest exception of God of War. Everyone who's seen God of War has just been blown away by how graphically pretty that game is and how smooth it runs. Granted, it's not a 4K and 60 frames per second game, but you know that's, that's definitely something to see that the PS4 Pro, based on today's standards, is delivering an exceptional amount of graphical power, which is more than well suited and required by majority of the population. You will have your niche group of people who prefer to have extremely expensive looking games or an extreme, you know, extremely graphical games like people who buy the most expensive graphic cards. And fine, you can't satisfy all markets. Consoles are looking to you know, favor those people who are not too anal about graphics but like graphics and want the comfort of playing from their couch or want the comfort of take it wherever they go, not similar to like how a PC operates. So that whole thing I just said is kind of like one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is when the first PlayStation 4 launched, and this is true, a lot of people complained that the graphic difference between the PS4 and the PS3 was not super substantial that would warrant them upgrading right away. And so as you saw in PS4 sales, years one, two, and three, so 2013, 14, and 15, the sales continued to grow. And as you started to come towards where the PS4 Pro got launched, those sales started to stay flat and now they're on the decline. And so that leads up to what John Codera was saying is that the PS4 is finally at its final end of its life cycle. And what he's basically saying is that the consoles that have sold in the past, they sold at a high record amount of units and they're going to start to 
saturate the market or they've already saturated the market and penetrated it enough to the point where there's really not that much more room to continue growing sales of PS4, but now it's going to start to go on its way of a decline. And anyone who studied business know that typically any product, be it a console, be it anything really, has a, a life cycle, right? Where it starts to go up and then eventually starts to go back down before they have to innovate and bring something out again. So the PS4 Pro basically just kind of extended their life cycle a bit by giving a little bit more of a, you know, a new, a new introduction to the market, let's call it. But it's interesting to see the directions that Sony's taking now. And, you know, some things that he said, and of course, uh, just to refer to this, to, to quote me on this, guys, you can Google it. I don't have access to Wall Street Journal. I lost mine after I did my MBA, and so I never went and got it again. But if you go ahead and if you do have access to it, you can see the full comments that he had from the reporter. I can't remember the reporter's name. I think it was Takashi something. But um, he gave a full interview with them and basically shared why he's taking the next steps with Sony that he's decided to take. And I agree with it. I think it makes absolute sense. I don't think it makes sense for the PS4, or sorry, the PS5 to come out next year or the year after. I mean, here's another thing. Here's reason number three. Some of the best games that come out for a console, like I said in my other videos, always tend to come out towards the end of the generation. And that's just reason to keep people to keep playing those consoles, keep people buying those consoles, you know, more reason to do that. And now, again, it gives developers full access to the system and well actually they've always had full access to the system but they just get really better at utilizing the power that's given you can't compare consoles to pcs directly because the architecture is different even though it's based on pc like you know processors and whatnot really the power of a playstation 4 pro or an xbox one x is not directly and easily comparable to let's say a gtx 1060 or 1050 ti or any of that it's just different the way they do it they they're able to squeeze more efficiencies out of consoles than they are with pcs and so what basically what i'm trying to say is towards the end of the life cycle the games start looking better and if you look at the catalog of games that are coming out for ps4 you've got dead stranding you've got days gone you've got the last of us 2 you've got the ghost of tsunami those are all games that are banking on taking that system to the next level and they're very very popular exclusive games that are getting a lot of recognition right now I know a lot of people who are waiting for The Last of Us 2. I mean, the first one was so amazing, they remastered it for PS4, and it was just glowing reviews everywhere. And if you haven't played it, you've wasted time. You need to go and play that. It's an amazing game. But my, my point is, basically, is that they're saving some of those really, really good games to keep this console alive. You won't expect all of these games to come out in 2018, 19, or 20 even. They're going to space them across all three of these years so that it makes more sense. And, you know, that's obvious. Like, this year's the biggest title was God of War. Um, who knows what else is going to come out as, aside from Detroit Become Human. I mean, that's also a good title and showing off all the stuff, but it's just different than the way God of War is made. Um, so that's why I think it makes sense for them to continue to push and have the console developed in 2021. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, what do people say about, you know, what's the future of consoles, basically? So as we develop technologically and as we start to increase our technological abilities to do things, so with the PlayStation Now server and even like Xbox has its own, streaming games is not a far-fetched thought like it was six, seven years ago. Six, seven years ago, you thought, oh, streaming that, you're going to have to have really good internet, the requirements have to be great, and then there might be lag connection issues and stuff. And granted, we still have some of those issues today, but it's just not as bad as it was six, seven years ago. So now fast forward three years from now, most people will have better internet connections in their house. Some of the requirements that are today would be pr probably similar, let's say, or if, if they're even more, um, we'll be able to be in a situation where we can achieve that. So I think it's very possible that in 2021, we can stream 4K quality games that could run at 60 frames per second, and we might just have a cloud-like console that does not have its own standalone system of digital disk. Now, that's one school of thought. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen. I think a lot of the play goes on selling the physical games. Most people argue and say, hey, digital is the way to go. And I had some comments of people even say that downloading digital is faster on one of the Xbox reviews that I did. But honestly, you know, that's bogus, guys. It's Nobody is going to go full out digital. There's a ton of people who still buy a bunch of physical copy of games. I'm one of them. And I like to buy my physical copy games because frankly, they're always cheaper than getting them digital. So if you're about saving money, and again, like on this channel, that's one of the subliminal messages that I try to deliver. I try to save money whenever I can. And that's what I do for a living. That's what I do on my personal side, on my professional side, every, every side that I can think of. 
trying to save money is the best thing to do, right? So there's no point in me going and paying, let's say, 60 bucks for a game on PlayStation Store when I know I could go down to Best Buy and pay 48 bucks for it because I have a Gamer Club Pass, or if it's on sale for their deal of the day or whatever. You know what I mean? My point is, I don't really fully see the next generation of consoles being completely and only um, run on a cloud-based server. But it is something that to think about, so I'll let you guys ponder about that and think what else is going to happen. And the other interesting thing that, well, the third piece of this, this little video I'm doing for you guys, he mentioned something about portable gaming, and that was really interesting because I kind of lost hope in the Vita. I was one of the early adopters that bought the Vita as well. I... Um, funny story, I bought the Vita, the Vita once, played it for about a few months, sold it. Bought it twice, second time, played it for a few more months, sold it again. Third time, bought it, played it for about a week or two, and sold it again. I've had three run-ins with the Vita, and always because something came out and I kept trying to give it a second chance. Like, the when the PS4 came out, I said, oh, cool, remote play is going to work. Just didn't turn out to be as fun as I would like it. I actually like doing remote play on a computer or a laptop better than doing it on the Vita, just because the controls are kind of quirky. But... My point is, I think they're trying to get back in, and now the Nintendo, the Switch has really proved, like, hey, guys, there's a market for handheld. They sold 17 million units in their first year, which is, you know, impeccable, considering Nintendo was falling behind with the Wii U. They came back, they're back in the game, and it's giving all these other competition a chance to get in the market as well. And I really, really hope that Microsoft comes out with something that is also handheld. That would be amazing. Um, and, you know starts focusing on some freaking games and some software versus just hardware. I mean, Microsoft, looking at you guys, you guys need to freaking step up your game and getting games on for your system. But all in all, I mean, these are three major things. Like, are we going to see another portable system? And if so, when? What is it going to look like? How is it going to be um, in terms of interacting with with consoles today and interacting with PCs as well. And given that, you know, our smartphones have just become so developed and so advanced that most people can run a whole bunch of apps on them and just continue to use those to get most of their gaming needs for people who are very, very casual players. Then, you know, does it make sense? Do you agree that the PS5 is going to come out in three years? Do you think that that's really the direction that they're taking? I personally do. And it sounds like from their leadership that that's what they're going for. Um, you know, I love interacting with you guys. Leave your comments down below. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button or like and subscribe button and we shall connect again. But uh, I'll see you guys in the comments. I'll respond and hopefully we'll, we'll see what happens with Sony, man. I, I wanted to give you guys a quick update if you haven't taken a look at this. So hopefully PS5 looking at a release date of 2021. Until guys, stay savvy and I'll see you all on the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.